Yeah. Implantation of embryo uh, into the endometrium is the first and most important step in the establishment of a successful pregnancy. So, the proposal mechanisms of implantation failure is still poorly understood. Hence, I would like to call upon Honorable Madam Dr. Uh, Indira Hinja to talk about optimizing implantation. Dr. Indira Hinja uh, is the head of the department, uh, Indija Hospital IVF Centre. Madam is the recipient of Padmashri Award by the President of India in March 2011 and Dhanatri Award by the Governor of Maharashtra 2000 and Lifetime Achievement Award from Foxy. We welcome you, ma'am. Good morning, friends. Uh, thanks, Kamini. Uh, I'm just going to share our experience about implantation failure. Now, first of all, we all know for the good implantation, you require a good embryo, receptive endometrium, and synchronized dialogue between the two. The implantation is nothing but the attachment of the embryo to the decidualized endometrium, which is first the opposition, adhesion, and trophoblastic invasion. But decidualization is irrespective of the occurrence of the pregnancy. All that occurs in the window of implantation, which is self-limited period, and it is under influence of estrogen and progesterone, and it is a mid-secretory phase, and it's considered as LH6 to LH10 and for a natural cycle, and HSG administration 6 and 10 in between. Most important of this is the recurrent implantation failure which occurs in the implantation occurrence of the pregnancy in spite of the good embryo and the natural maternal and paternal factors. And that's the stage where we feel that probably it is the endometrium which is at defect. Today we will see at the genomic level what exactly happens in endometrium. As you know, endometrial receptivity is a complex process is nothing but the milieu of regulated by thousands of genes which coming from the receptive endometrium as well as the blastosis. Now we think about nothing but it is an intricate of cascades, Re regularization and interaction of thousands of genes which are being listed in this picture if you go to see. And similarly, you can see an equal number of genes which are coming from blastosis as well as the endometrium and there are number of interactions between the number of processes. Therefore, the ancient method of dating of endometrium or single gene approach cannot be validated in these cases. Therefore, the whole genome study of the microarray may be the one which will give you the idea of number of genes which can have interaction between each other in one single reaction at a time. So this being a process which is such a complicated, there are number of publications as far as the microwave, microwave studies which say the study of the endometrium in various phases of the menstrual cycle comparison of the normal as well as repeated failure patient and also in a stimulated cycle in a different protocols. But there is no comparison so far where we have compared the normal woman and implantation failure in similar condition that is in the stimulation of the endometrium. Why? Because we know it that and the super physiological levels of the hormone, the receptivity always gets affected. Probably it gets deteriorated. And estrogen progesterone signaling pathway also are being observed dysregulated. Not even that. These number of genes which are expressed by the endometrium also have shown the delayed pattern. Therefore, you cannot extrapolate the normal natural cycle to the stimulated cycle. Therefore, we undertook the studies where 25 cases of repeated implantation failure and compared with the 25 donors who had proved facility and stimulated by the same protocol. Now, 
as you can never compare the normal and stimulated cycle together, we all know that there are some signals which are coming from the embryo as well. So in these cases, we cryopreserve the embryo so that there will not be the bias from the signals from the embryo and signals from the endometrium. Therefore, we have two groups. One are the cases where the woman has at least two repeated failure of implantation and the normal donor who have proved fertility. Both the groups were less than 40 years of the age. There were previous failed IVF at least two cycles and the proof fertility in the control and both of them yielded the good quality embryo which were cryopreserved <coughs> and physiologically normal endometrium. Whichever techniques today are available to study the endometrium like thickness on the sonography, endometrial biopsy and all that were both in a similar way. Such a hormonal abnormality, autoimmunity, PCOD, endometriosis, male factors were excluded from this study. This was our flow chart. Endometrial biopsy was collected during the window of implantation. They were homogenized in the liquid nitrogen and RNA was ex extracted, which was subjected to whole genome gene expression microarray and also the part of the tissue was subjected uh, for the RNA, where, uh, subjected by PCR, where we had to convert RNA to DNA. Whereas, short-listed genes from RI study were also again tested, validated by PCR, and most of these genes were also studied by immunohistochemistry for the localization and protein expression. The microarray was performed by Lumina Human HD Expression Array, targeting 47,000 DNA probes and more than 35,000 genes. Extraction of DNA, which was again converted into RNA, that was labeled by biotin, it was purified and amplified and was hybridized to form the microarray chip. Let's see how the analysis results were. Now, raw data was created by Genome Studio software modulation data. It was subjected by background abstraction, quantile normalization and p-value was generated per bioferrine and corrected p-value was considered 0.05 to 0.01 as a having significance. Thus, differentially expressed genes were calculated. The fold chain in relation to the normal cases was calculated by these many parameters and genes having fold chain 1.5 or more considered to be altered in the express as compared to the donor's levels. Now, such a large amount of data which was generated by microarray, it had to be filtered and enriched with respect to the function and pathways of those functions is to in, which are involved in endometrial receptivity. For that, gene ontology, pathoanalysis, equity pathway analysis, and cytoscope enrichment mapping was done and separate analysis was done to label them as down regulation, up regulation and dysregulation of these pathways. Gene expression by rear tank was also validated. Why? Because microarray the cost around 25 to 30,000 rupees. If the same results can be obtained by PCR, Probably that will be much cheaper and lesser. Therefore, all these cases were subjected for real-time PCR as well. The action play was, which was also re replicated several times to compare the results. The endometrial biopsy, RNA extraction, conversion in DNA, quantitative real-time PCR and eventually the statistics analysis. 
All the endometrial biopsies were stayed with hematoxylin eosin to see the characteristic of secretory phase that we are taken in the proper endometrial receptivity or study in the implantation window. And also some selected genes which were more, dif more differently differentiated like PAAP, LEAF and LIFHC gene were also studied by immunohistochemistry for the localization and the protein expression. Now let's compare the results of these. Our database from microarray differentially expressed genes were 1085. Of that, 595 genes were upregulated and 492 were downregulated. When we considered fold chain 1.5, the total 619 genes were differentially expressed of that 348 upregulated and 71 were downregulated. This enrichment analysis to study the biological processes, molecular function of these genes and cellular components ontology study by David was performed. The David study showed the biological processes which were downregulated were much more See the list of green as compared to the upregulated processes. And these downregulated processes mainly were immune process, inflammatory process, the um, response, and also the T cell response, and so on. In upregulated genes, the important was oxidation reduction process, which is a general and common, which is non specific. Now, as far as the molecular function of these, also we found they were there at the molecular level at the action site itself in the pathway studies. The green which has been shown are the functions which were downregulated because of the downregulation of these genes. And after localization, we found that these majority of the genes are expressed on the plasma membrane and they are extracellular. So you can see almost that blue, red, violet and yellow, they are all extracellular genes. The enrichment analysis by IPA was also done in addition to ontology. Here you can see the number of functions is which were downregulated because of the downregulated genes are shown in color blue. Most of the saliva looks blue. The majority of these functions is were downregulated. The mainly they were hematological system development and the function, immune cell trafficking, it was inflammatory response, cell movements, cell to cell signaling, cellular development and the growth and tissue morphology. Now we correlated these functions along with the pathway analysis. You can see the green in color which were the genes which were downregulated. In the center is the two in the immune response and the blue line is so inhibition of these functions. This is mainly the immune response was inhibited by these downregulated genes. So also is inflammatory. You can see the number of green genes which are downregulated. Blue line suggests the pathways and inhibition and center is the inflammatory. In other words, inflammatory and immune system both were downregulated in the women where the genes were also done. Here we saw the dysregulation of the pathways of these processes. In the green are the number of genes and number of dysregulated immune and inflammatory functional pathways are also dysregulated. That means the downregulated gene directly affects the processes and their function. When these pathways we plotted down, we found all these dysregulated pathways are interconnected to each other. In other words, one stimulates other or one stimulates inhibits other. They all are interconnected and form a nice network whereas upregulated genes were scattered and they had no connection with each other. 
Now, same thing we have validated by PCR. You can see here the genes are listed on the left hand side and fold chain with negative chain, which is by microarray. And similar results were obtained on PCA. So, that way we could validate the findings by PCR and also replicated the findings. This is the histogram of this. Immunohistochemistry was done by expression of the protein. You can see that some of the selected genes controlled in the upper, they were higher expression and whereas in the cases it was a low expression of this. The interesting was that 25 cases who were uh, failure of implantation after long time follow up, we found two of them conceived after a year or so. We compared the gene expression of the two with 23 those who had failed and we realized some of the genes which we have labeled them which were down regulated were up regulated in those two women which conceived. Now in summary one can say biological function, other functions, top heat graph, real-time PCR, pathway analysis and immunohistochemistry all point that immune and inflammatory processes are suppressed in the women who have undergone repeated failure. Now how these things help to achieve our results and what we can do? In the normal cases in the window of implantation, there are recruitment of immune cells like monocyte and cells, they get differentiated and secretion of the growth factor, cytokine, chemokine and express genes like leaf and that <coughs> results in expression of the ligand, adhesion ligand like selection and these are the ones which attract for the attachment. Now, cytokines of endocrine secretes two types of uh, molecules, one is pro-inflammatory molecules and anti-inflammatory molecule. There have to be a good synchronization of these two. Any of this one is lost or not present, the whole cascade which is shown on that side gets disturbed. Therefore, from our study we found that in window of implantation there has to be pro-inflammatory response, that is TH1 response. If there is a loss of pro-inflammatory there is a failure of implantation. <coughs> but at the same time, in the first trimester, there has to be anti-inflammatory response. There will be a conversion of Th1 to Th2. If there is a loss of anti-inflammatory, there is a miscarriage in the first trimester. Thus, we feel from other study, you can find a, a treatment. Before you do that, you have to find the test according to the panel either by the PCR or by microarray which can be very useful to diagnose the causes of implantation failure. For example, if the woman has repeated implantation failure, there is a decreased immune response, these other women may be helped by injury to the endometrium. It can be mechanical or it can be pharmacological. But there is an increased immune and inflammatory response and these are the women who can be helped by steroid administration. Ladies and gentlemen, therefore from my study I can conclude the down regulation of maternal immune response was found to be associated with the pure endometrial receptivity and implantation failure. The imbalance between the pro-inflammatory an anti-inflammatory response could be one of the cause. However, the study is quite small. One can substantiate with the larger study and we are in that process. This paper has been already published in American Journal of Immunology. We haven't stopped there. We have also published the mechanism, mechanistic approach of these genes. Why these genes get altered? And how do they get altered in the endometrium by our next paper, which is DNA methylation, and which has been published almost a week ago. Thank you. Thank you.